Protein is by far the most important macronutrient when it comes to longevity. It allows us to put on muscle mass, but more importantly, preserve the muscle mass that we have as we age. Currently, the recommendation for the United States is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day, which is way nowhere near enough to be able to preserve that muscle mass needed to help our stability and our strength as we grow older to live as well as we can for as long as we can. So in this video, we're going to look at how much protein you should take, how often you should take it, how much you should take in each sitting, and just how to time it around things like exercise, sleep, all of that stuff to make sure that you are purely optimal in the way that you are consuming your protein. So the first thing we want to look at is the big goal. How much protein should we be taking overall? Most people grossly underestimate how much focus they need to put on protein to get the adequate amount. And if you are not focusing on it or not thinking about it a lot, the chances are you are undernourished in that particular macronutrient. So according to the literature, and I'll caveat, unless you have a disease like kidney disease where it can be quite harmful to have too much protein, it is thought that the optimal amount of protein is to have two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So for example, I'm about 75 kilos, so that's around 150 grams of protein a day. So once you kind of get your head around just how much protein that is, you will realize that 150 grams is quite a lot to get through in a day. So the next thing is, well, how do we break that protein requirement up? You can't just take 150 grams in one go because it won't have the effect. So with that 150 grams, so there are some rules that we need to bear in mind to understand how to fit all of those pieces in. The first is that each sitting can only really be around 30 to 50 grams of protein. The reason being is that if we don't do enough protein, it doesn't trigger the muscle protein synthesis that we need to have muscle growth and maintain that muscle mass. If we do go below really around 20 grams, but to be on the safe side, will we say 30? You can do, really what happens is the protein just goes into being used for energy consumption. And the same on the other end, if you go above 50 grams, it stops going towards muscle protein synthesis and actually just ends up being used as energy the same as the other fuels. So that's why me having 150 gram requirement, I can't just mainline protein shakes in one go and that's me done for the day. It's important to bear in mind that that 30 to 50 grams, what period is that over? It's actually a three hour window within which that can be absorbed. So if you do the 30 to 50 gram dose, start thinking of the doses of protein, then you have to wait three hours until you can do the next, which is why those windows matter when you're trying to fit that amount into a day. So then once we've got the total that we need, so for me 150, and that could be anything, you know, depending on your size from let's say 120 all the way to maybe even 200 for some people. And we know that we can only get 30 to 50 grams in a three hour window. We start thinking, well, how do we fit all of this in? And really what we want to do is start doing that equation to fit it in over three to four servings. So like I say, I call them protein doses just to kind of make it a little bit more uh, of a, reframe the way that we're thinking about it to be looking at it in terms of getting the right amount at the right time. But really, we can break it into three or four doses, if we will. So that's why time-restricted feeding, so things like intermittent fasting, can sometimes be a challenge because in that short eating window, some people find it very difficult to get the protein requirement that they need. So what some people can do, and uh, the intermittent fasting purists will argue against this, but they can take a low-calorie but high-protein protein shake outside of the eating window to make sure that they get that protein requirement. But regardless of why you're taking a protein shake, if you want to find out how you can work out which ones are good protein sources, not full of crap, check out this video here where I do a walkthrough of how to choose the right protein powder for you and go through a couple of examples of ones you might consider. One of the big things people ask is about timing their protein consumption relative to working out. So one of the old ways of thinking was that you needed to go in with a protein, high protein meal, lots of protein in your system, just consume before you went into a weight training session. So that's why people would take BCAAs, branch chain amino acids, and they would want to have that immediately before going into a workout. We now know that that is not true. The, it actually doesn't affect your ability to synthesize muscle because when you go into a workout and you're lifting weights, the protein breakdown from muscle is so vast that really no amount of protein that you could consume because of the absorption, like say the maximum 50 grams, no amount that you could consume could offset that amount of breakdown. What is important is the proximity with which you take protein after the workout. But remember, the most important thing is the dose size. So when we have that after our workout, as long as we're hitting those 30 to 50 grams of protein, that's the most important thing. So how do we go about fitting this into our day? 
One of the things that's really important is that although protein is the most important macronutrient, it doesn't mean that we throw out the window all of the other nutritional stuff that we know. So it's important to keep eating healthy, whole foods, high, you know, fruit, vegetables, lots of stuff high in antioxidants, all the stuff that we know is important, but also prioritize our protein doses and fix those into our schedule. So the way I do this for me is I divide it into four blocks, that 150 gram dose that I need throughout the day. And I have certain fixed elements that I know I'm going to do every single day and then some movable elements which are basically the meals that I have. So my two fixed blocks are every morning I will make sure that I eat four scrambled eggs so that's typically seven grams of protein per whole egg if it's a decent size and um, four of those obviously makes 28 not quite the 30 but I'll have it with a cup of tea with milk and that will bring it up to about 32 to make sure that I'm getting that First thing in the morning, I'll have the scrambled eggs with some mushrooms and some spinach just because I like it and it obviously gets in those vegetables as well. And that means that that's one thing that I have every single day. For me, I find it absolutely delicious and I can just keep doing that day in, day out. And that means that one of those doses is done for the day. The other thing that I will always do in the afternoon about four o'clock between lunch and dinner, so I'll eat lunch about one, I'll eat dinner about seven, and I'll have bang in the middle, like I say, that three hour window either side, I'll have a protein shake and I'll get around 40 to 50 grams of protein in that. So that is already up to about 80 of the 150 that I can guarantee that I will get every single day. So then it's just simply about choosing a lunch and a dinner that have the required remaining protein. So 70 grams divided over lunch and dinner, pretty easy to do. One of them can be a reasonable, not particularly large steak will give me at least 30 grams quite easily. A normal size steak that you get from the supermarket will probably be over 50. So that's that sorted. And then lunch, you can just find something that, that you like that helps you make up the rest. Obviously, the maths doesn't always add up and it doesn't really matter if you overshoot slightly. It's just about making sure that you do those three to four servings of 30 to 50 grams. And that really is the most important thing. So there you have a lovely framework for how to consume your protein throughout the day. If you want to find out which are the, what I think are the best protein shakes, but more importantly, how to choose a protein shake that is right for you, check out this video here where I go through a framework to help you decide. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in that video.